Hey, what is going on? You are listening and watching today my live weekly podcast called Sex with Stevie. I am Steve V. Rodriguez here. Um, this is the uh, the sisterly, brotherly show of Tags Podcast that you listen to that comes out every Tuesday. This show is my live show that's a call-in show that's kind of a lot of fun. I really love doing this. Um, let's get right into it. I've got some special guests calling in this week. Um, you can call in too. You can message me. Um, we are live here on Facebook. And I think my first question to you is, um, before we get into this crazy week, and it's it's a crazy week, and uh, we're not going to totally get into every single thing, um, but you can see I've got my glasses on today because I need to read because it's one of those weeks. But I wanted to know from you on a fun note this week, I asked you last time what's your favorite lube, and I needed to know what's your favorite poppers or vacuum cleaners as some people call them. Um, and recommendations because I understand that um, they don't keep very long and you almost have to um, I feel like I'm burning something here excuse me um, I feel like that you actually have to keep them in the freezer or something to keep them active so that's my question to you what's your favorite poppers put it in our messages today there um, I'm live streaming today the number to call in is 908 Three one zero ten fifteen nine zero eight. Actually, you know what? Let me get that number again because I am forgetting it. Um, but well, I'm going to put it in the in the thing. But I've got some guests calling in, and I'm really excited. Um, this is a big um, blow this week because we lost a really great figure in our community that's done so much for AIDS research. I'm talking about Larry Kramer, who passed away um, yesterday, I believe. And for those of you, I know so many of you know his work, Larry Kramer, um, the first thing that comes to mind is his infamous play, The, uh, the Normal Heart, which was a huge play from 1985. Uh, there is a film, you can actually watch it on HBO, that's really um, amazing and but Larry Kramer was one of those activist artists if you know what I mean and we lost a really good one particularly in this time of this pandemic that we're in uh, Larry Kramer stood for so much of what we need to, what we could stand for now um, particularly about standing up not letting down about you know about just what's wrong in this world right now and um, you know I just I wanted to salute him um, because he is responsible he started the gay men's health crisis um, as well as act up which we all know about I wanted to read a few of his uh, infamous quotes here because he, there's so many of them and he was um, I'm just going to read you a few of his quotes. Uh, there will always be enemies. Time to stop being your own. And this is from a book uh, called Faggot that he wrote in the early 70s, I believe, that got tons of controversy because so many of the gays thought that, that he interviewed that thought that he was um, kind of talking down to the gay community and was exposing the gay community. And in fact, the book Faggots actually wasn't allowed, uh, was banned in certain bookstores here in New York City, um, both gay and straight. Um, it's later become a phenomenon, the book. Uh, I just ordered my copy though, and I thought it'd be a great summer read to kind of honor Larry Kramer. Um, some of his other quotes that I was struck by, um, he writes, of the 2,639,857 faggots in the New York City area, 2,639,857 think primarily with their cocks. You didn't know that the cock was a thinking organ, he writes. <laughs> Well, by this time, you should know that it is. 
Larry Kramer from the book Faggots. Um, gonna read a couple more here that struck. Um, Almost more than talent, you need tenacity and an infinite capacity for rejection if you are to succeed. Wow, I'm gonna read that again. Almost more than talent, you need tenacity and an infinite capacity for rejection if you are to succeed. That can apply to so many things in our lives. Um, wow, really good stuff. Um, another fun from the book that I'm gonna read, Faggots, Larry Kramer. Holy shit, somebody muttered in the dark, a virgin, sputtered another. I didn't know they still made them. He just did. <laughs> wow, um, so many great books um, and, and such a great soul that we lost, Larry Kramer. Um, again, you can watch The Normal Heart. Uh, I think it's on HBO streaming and I'm gonna read the book Faggots to honor him. And we lost a good one. And so I just think that, um, you know, we got to honor those that we can right now. Um, again, you're watching Sex with Stevie. Cheers to Thursday nights. And I, don't, I hope you're enjoying a cocktail with me on this day. Um, I've got some special guests calling in today. I'm really excited today about Finn Deerhart. He's been on the Tags podcast several times. And um, we're going to really get into what he's doing right now that I love. If you missed... This week's Tags podcast, um, it's out right now, it came out Tuesday. It is episode 166. I interviewed a, a psychiatrist, Dr. Eric Yarbrough, and um, unbeknownst to me, he lives here in the city, and I was really excited, and he's a psychiatrist, and I thought, when it's this is probably the time right now when we should probably be checking in with our mental health. And he certainly shed uh, a lot of light onto everything relating to not just um, the obvious, like depression and will we ever go out again and will we ever have sex again, I asked him. Um, he had some really good insights. I really highly recommend uh, this interview. It's this week's episode of Tax Podcast, episode 166 with, with Eric Yarbrough. Um, I liked it so much that I want him back on the show, probably in the fall, and we're going to talk about some of the other work that he does with the transgender community, as well as with um, minority groups, which you can imagine right now, that's, um, yeah, those are the ones that we need to kind of be focusing on. So uh, that is that. Um, the number to call in to tonight is 908-312-1015. I've got some special guests calling in that I'm really excited to have on the show, um, including my first guest when he calls in. I think I'm just going to put his tag up here right now, actually, so that I'm ready for him. Uh, let me just get this going here as I do this, because I always forget this thing here. Um, excuse me, while I do this. Oh, here we go, yes, 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 yes. Um, let me see. Um, here we go, got it. I'm going to get rid of that. The thing, the beauty of live. Uh, my first guest is gonna be calling in shortly. He goes by Amelia Duquesne. I can't wait for him to call in because we have got a lot to discuss. Um, and so that's my first guest calling in. Um, some other things that I wanted to, I was a guest on a podcast with Mr. Bullet Leather. The podcast is called Leather Talk with Mr. Bullet Leather. You can exactly that, Leather Talk with Mr. Bullet Leather. And it was a lot of fun because this week I did, um, he launches every episode essentially with um, a live uh, Zoom meeting. And so it was me with a bunch of other guys uh, in full leather 
um, I'm going to put the picture up of us, and you can listen to the episode. He interviewed me about the time when I was running for Mr. New York Eagle, and um, it was a lot of fun, and um, yes, so let me just try this real quick. Hello, hello. Ah, that's what it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, my my thing here. Yes, exactly. Um, please welcome my guest today, Amelia Duquesne. How you doing? How are you, Steve? Thanks for having me. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I really wanted you on on the show uh, for a lot of reasons. One of which, as uh, I know you work in the New York nightlife scene, and one of the things, I know you don't have a lot of information, but we all know that New York City is, and many cities actually around the country, are gradually, little by little, starting to open up. And I'm wondering if you had any information, because one of the things that I heard is, the mayor said that they're gonna start utilizing outdoor spaces and I had and maybe closing off streets and I had this fantasy because you work at the New York Eagle. I had a fantasy with you too, of course. But <laughs> but I had this fantasy that maybe they would close twenty eighth street where the New York Eagle is at and we could all be like congregated on the streets of you know what I mean? Does that is that far fetched? I I hear you on that one. Um I'm not too sure. I mean I would think if they did, my personal opinion, would be 27th Street, right around just as they do like the, you know, the, 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 the Folsom Street event, you know, because it's not blocking any residents, it's not blocking another business, and, you know, they've kind of, I guess, had permits to do that on that street, you know. Right, right. Yeah, you're talking about every year that was canceled, actually, this year, but you're talking about Folsom East, the sister. Correct. Uh, Folsom Street Fair in San Francisco, and they often close that street. Um, you know, it's funny because on the weekends, I've been riding my bike around New York City, and a lot of the gay bars, I went to HK to snoop around, and then I made my way to the village, and places like the Monster Bar are doing outdoor, they're serving like drinks uh, to go, but people are sort of congregating at the little park like across the street and I even took my drink to this other little nook to talk to somebody on the phone and it's kind of got this New Orleans vibe where we can drink outside or that Vegas vibe right now and I'm wondering like how long that'll last but it's kind of fun you know I, yeah they, they do, they're doing it out here in Long Island um, as well I've seen a couple of you know bars and you know take out uh, places that do you know drinks and food or whatever the case may be but I, I me personally again think that it's just unsafe to do that you know again people you know when they start to drink they get a little bit more close you know and then you just have that wandering you know stranger on the street that knows okay these folks have money in their pocket you know is this a good time to to stick them up or anything like that i'm just nervous that there's some sort of you know accident waiting to happen behind that you know because you have these you know, people who are drinking on the streets. I mean, what's your thought on that? My, you know, it, it seems to work in some of these. I was talking recently to somebody in, like, in London. It seems like they managed to let them drink outside of pubs, and it, and it all works fine. Um, but I don't trust myself sometimes, so there's that. Um, the other thing I think about it is that... Um, you know, like we were seeing around the country, are, are people just going to get too comfortable? Obviously, you have to pull your mask down when you have a cocktail. Um, and so people's inhibitions, and particularly with alcohol and such, might go down. And it's not like anybody ever said that the pandemic or the virus has gone away. And so, yet. And so I think... I'm, I'm mixed on it. I mean, I do want to get together with people, but I feel for some of these businesses, particularly the one, my guest this week, uh, Dr. Eric Yarbrough, a psychiatrist, is a big Eagle patron. And he, he said if, if there was a fund, he would love to support it. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, 
again, we're waiting, you know, and anxious just as everybody else is. You know, as soon as we hear something, you know, if we're allowed to say something, we will because, you know, we miss everybody. We love everybody, you know. That's my second home away from home, you know, and we have a great family there, you know. We all kind of keep in contact with each other. We've created, well, my colleague Kyle, um, Applegate, if you guys yes. don't know Kyle, the boot black at the Eagle, but he's come up with this Eagle family. Just all bonded together, some of the bartenders, some of the co-check guys, the security, and, you know, we kind of all keep a, a loop on each other. We do a lot of FaceTiming, a lot of house party apps and stuff like that just to, you know, keep each other afloat. And um, we're just as anxious, like I said, as, as, you know, all of the patrons are too, just to get back and see each other, our Eagle family, as well as you know all the patrons we we miss everybody you know it's a family there um you know one of the yeah absolutely <laughs> one of the things that i wanted to uh, particularly ask you is one of your more recent traditions it seems following you being a friend of you is every summer i think it's maybe the fourth of july you make your way to p-town for bear week which is uh, anybody that knows P-Town, I have a love affair with it, like so many of us do. Bear Week in particular is crazy and so much fun. And and I'm just, I think I saw you post something. It must have been like a Throwback Thursday thing, being Throwback Thursday. Um, what can you tell me about this? I mean, I'm assuming it's canceled or, or what? Yeah, definitely canceled. The 4th of July is canceled. Um, you know, again, I go for Bear Week, which my birthday falls during that week, so I'm really upset you know this would have been my eighth year straight going to p-town for bear week um you know they cancel carnival so I, i'm in contact with you know mary alice who's the dj at the boat slip and it's just it's very sad for all of us you know i had my costume you know in plan for this 2020 like burst so i can't do that but um i just love going there i was introduced uh again when i turned 30 and I was actually nervous to bring this whole drag scene up to P-Town because I've heard it was just like this, you know, playground of just bears and daddies and it's whatever you want it to be. It's magical. And, and, and I says, I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not bringing drag. I'm not shaving my hair, you know, and my friend says, all right, we'll give the room to someone else. And I called my, you know, partner at the time and I was just like, and he's just like, Steve, you know, I'll just do it. And so that first year, of course, nervous as hell, walking down Commercial Street in these heels, making sure that I don't fall, you know, it, it was just so much anxiety going through my head. What are they going to think of me? And I get down to tea dance, then the boat slip, and I says, you know what, let me just forget about this all and just have fun on your birthday weekend. And then the, the joy, the, the people that just reach out and pour to me that I've met over the, the, the years, it's just amazing. They buy me drinks. It's it's so magical. And, uh, you know, that first year I actually jumped in the boat slip pool because I was so nervous. I'm like, this oh. girl's tight, you know, this wig, I'm sweating, my, my makeup's going to run. And I just took it and just jumped in the pool. <laughs> so that was a statement that these guys will always remember about me. And uh, I'm going to definitely miss it this year, you know, definitely. I mean, I love that you are sharing this whole side of yourself that, um, you know, bear, you just imagine that it's this masculine. And I think that it sounds like you were sort of exploring that your masculine and feminine sides, or just the fact that you have this alter ego, Amelia Duquesne, which I want to ask a few more questions on and how you came up with that name in a second. But I think I've been talking to different people, friends of mine, and in the past, exploring that side of yourself or your feminine side or, heaven forbid, you were a leather, leather man but did drag. And I think, you know, jumping into the pool, having your, you have a, obviously a great friend that encouraged you to just, you know what, just go for it and, and storm down Commercial Street, the, the main the street on, on, in P-Town. And I commend you for that because it's not always easy, right? Oh, no. Walking in those heels, it's, it's not easy. Putting on five, you know, five pairs of stockings, you know, pulling you-know-what back, yep. you know. and Tucking. <laughs> just trying to make sure that you're just the best that you can be and, and just have a good time at it, you know. There's no wrong way to do drag. No wrong way. 
you here's, know? Here's an in- interesting question for you because you, your drag is phenomenal and fierce and you're so much fun when you do it. Um, there's a little bit of, of Steve, the guy that I know, but and then there's Amelia's a different kind of character. Do you feel sexy? Are you looking at guys when you're in drag, or does that go out the door and you're not even worried about all that sexual work, sexual side no. of yourself? No, and you know what's so crazy about this question? I was talking to another fellow queen of mine out here in, in Long Island, and I asked the same question. Do you feel sexy when you do drag and that whole bit? And do you indulge in, you know, do you participate in sexual activity while you're in drag? No, I don't. I mean, I've done things just with my ex, you know, just as a, a, a goof. Right. Just to see. But, um, I don't feel there's a sexy part of it about me. I think there's a glamour part of it, a pretty side of it. A fierceness. You know, a fierceness, you know, a little sassy. You, you, you know, every time I do it, it's, it's a different attitude. It's a different burst of energy. You know, it's fun. It's just fun. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we got to ask you. Um, I, I can't believe I don't. I've never asked you this question. But where did the name? It sounds to me so Dynasty era. Amelia <laughs> Duquesne, <laughs> and I <Okay>. love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I first met my ex, you know, I, I went to the bunkhouse out here in Long Island, down over by uh, Sayville, and um, where the ferries are, and they had drag shows and they had an emerald party. And I said, you know what, I want to see what I look like. So my friends encouraged me again to do this. So I'm on, you know, eBay, and I bought this $99 cheap dress. And then my ex at the time, he says, if you're going to do this, I'll buy the jewelry. He worked for Fortune Off at the time. Wow. So he used to get me, like, jewelry, and then he switched over to the backyard store part. So he sold outdoor furniture. There was a Duquesne grill. If you guys don't know, Duquesne is a sister company to the Weber family of grills. Okay, now. So that's where the Duquesne came from. He also drove a Volvo convertible. So we, again, one night coming from the bunkhouse, going home, I was a little turned up, and <laughs> I said, hey, can you, can you put the top down on this convertible? And he says, Steve, it's a blizzard. And I said, yeah, but can you just put the top down? And he's just like, really? And I said, please. So he says, all right. So he pulls over, puts the top down, and he had a little scarf on. And the funniest thing driving home that night in this blizzard down Sunrise Highway in Long Island was this little scarf that was blowing. And I just repeatedly said, you look like Amelia Earhart. And he says, you're Amelia. I'm not no Amelia. And I just took the Amelia and him buying the grill for me, Duquesne, and that night. I love that story so much. <laughs> it just fell into your lap. Amelia Duquesne. Love it. That's me. <laughs> you own it. Um, okay, and I wanted to run this name by you. Uh, uh, what do you think of this name? Because I've been thinking about drag, and when all this is over, I want to do drag with you at some point, if you'll allow me to. Okay. Um, but, and be honest, um, what do you think of the name Donna Matrix? Dama? Donna, like Donna, Donna Matrix. I've never heard it. I think it's fierce for you. For all the outfits that you really come through with, you've changed my whole life on leather and, and just fashion and everything. All the stuff that you wear to the Eagle, you know, your personal parties that I've attended. Anytime I just see you in a picture, there's always just a different style. And I think that you really come through with that leather look and Donna Matrix. Is the name for you. Wow, I feel like I've been crowned here. <laughs> and I kind of feel like I would be, I would feel sexy. You know, I would try and dress like a lot of my leather stuff, but kind of in a dominatrix styling. And who knows, maybe I'll get some something, something. <laughs> okay. We'll see. Well, I will. I will get you something. For, I will get Don. I will get Donna, Donna Matrix something. I love and it. I always remember Amelia Duquesne, and I just love it because I could just see your face now with all the different hairstyles as well, without even a wig, just the makeup on that face and a funky hairstyle, giving us a Donna Don, Donna Matrix. He's a tongue twister. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love it. Our question of the night is: Do you happen to have a favorite uh, poppers that you recommend by any chance? I do. Oh, good. I I actually like the. Leather Works down in, I think it's Fort Lauderdale. My friends usually bring it up. Yep. Their brown bottle. 
as as well as the Leatherman Brown Bottle. Those are my two favorites. Hey, okay, I love it. I so if I'm in New York, that's my favorite. Nice. Well, Amelia Duquesne, I want to thank you so much for calling in and, and gracing my little show here. It's been a super, super pleasure. I can't wait to see you in person, though. Yes, I love you. God bless. Stay safe. And I hope to see everyone soon. All right. Good night, guys. Good night. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm having some technical difficulties, but I think I figured it out here. I'm the guy, I was calling, I was getting voicemail, and I was like, well, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, let me just pull up your sound a little bit here. Um, turned up here. Um, Finn Dearheart, welcome to talk, um, Sex with Stevie, my live podcast. Yes, thank you again. I so love getting to connect with you in the work. Um, for, for people listening and don't know, Finn has been on the show a, a several times, and I just wanted to read just a quick quote. Um, Taking off the clothes is the easy part, you write. I can help mm-hmm. I can help with the rest of it, and I love that. Uh, Finn Deerhart is a sex and intimacy coach. He's been on the, the show um, several times. Um, I'm going to let people listen to some of those shows, and I'm going to put them on tagspodcast.com. Um, y- you do these workshops. I want to get into a video that I watched recently on fantasy, and that's why I kind of wanted you on the show. But I'm just curious, because a lot of the work as a sex and intimacy coach is you travel around the world, and how has this pandemic changed what you do? Oh my God, it's changed a lot actually. I have this year, I had like six trips lined up um, in different yeah, in different countries too. And then as soon as everything hit, um, all that started canceling. I was like, not it. And so um, my work moved online, which I was already doing a lot of online coaching for people that didn't live in San Francisco, but I also did a lot of in-person work in San Francisco. Um, so it went from hosting events every month and touch events and couple parties to just like exclusively working with um, guys online and supporting them through this piece that we're all in with COVID and um, you know supporting partners working on their relationship because right now everyone's in a situation where they're either isolated um, and not getting enough contact or they're like in relationships or you know situations in houses where they're not getting enough solo time so it all shifted it's that kind of same stuff but different circumstances you know so I mean my work's doing really well in, under the circumstances that it really was without that piece but definitely it's a, it's a different game now it's like giving people assignments and things to do even more so on their own and then reporting back and processing with me where it used to be you know in workshops on in person um, absolutely um, Finn are, are you talking like right into your microphone just it's just want to make sure you you're heard. Yeah, is it like is it um, not loud? Yeah, it's, it's not. Soft. It's a little soft. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything. Okay, yeah, I'm, just, I'm talking directly into it right now. Can you hear me better? Yeah, I think so. I, I pulled it up as much, and I think we're good. Um, you know, one of the videos that I watched of you uh, that you sent out is about fantasy and one of the things you were talking about is fantasy is indeed a window that we all have that can you write that reveals our emotional needs our longings our wounds from childhood and our deepest aspirations fantasies are my uh mythopoetic did i say that word right uh yeah like mythopoetic yeah yep okay a symbolic language into themselves and they are um, very much as real um, as is our real world. And you have an exercise that you want us to explore that really requires a lot of us to write down our fantasy. And so many of our fantasies, I can at least speak for myself, come from as a child. And I've noticed in my late 40s here that a lot of you know, I'm able to kind of like as a puzzle piece it together of and see Mm -hmm. where some of my fantasies actually really came from and I can kind of piece it together. Um, Your exercise, explain the exercise and why you want us to explore fantasy and and what it can do for us. 
Yeah, um, well, so that, that exercise you're describing brings up our, it's a free association, right? So, like, we might think that a fantasy is, um, it's about the, the literal things that we're fantasizing about, like either the circumstances or uh, the people in those, you know, visions that we're having. Uh, and really, those images that we see are, like, a symbolic representation of the quality of our own self that we're wanting to explore so if we just think of fantasy as like this static thing out there that you know isn't really part of our real life but it's something we want we miss the richness of like what it actually means to our emotional self and the problem is i think a lot of guys are not in touch with their emotional needs anyway so it's hard for them to really to, to break that together so this is the best exercise to free associate is a good way to get in touch with that and I think it's important because it helps us to get better quality out of our connections in general and also to understand if maybe some of the longings that we're having have nothing to do with sex even and maybe they're about other things in our lives that we're really wanting to connect to like being free and alive and maybe like unencumbered or I mean there's just so many different needs that we have and we try to squeeze a lot of those through sex quite often and then um, guys report you know like they're not having the quality that they want and the connections or in their relationships or even in their hookups because they're not really clear on what it is that they want so fantasy life really helps you know more about yourself and um, yeah I just think it's so rich it seems like a common theme for at least the show that Tag's podcast that we've been exploring here a lot lately, digging a little bit deeper into more meaningful sex or, or connected sex. But one could imagine during this pandemic, when we're uh, so many of us are isolated, uh, where we it is a great time to kind of reflect on some of these things. Um, I know the exercise that you recommend in the video that I was watching has you, which I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it this weekend because I'm. I want to make sure I know what's going to come up. And I was doing this show today, so I didn't want to be a mess. But you know what I mean. But um, you you recommend to write one of your fantasies down freely on all the uh, like a storyline almost that you okay. had, and to take. Uh, not like the small words but the, the main action verbs that you find in what you wrote and what do you ask us to do with some of those words if as you wrote it freely to look at them and, and do what? Yeah, so you write out the fantasy and you want to be really um, descriptive and precise about what it is that's turning you on because our brain thinks in like a series of images. We don't really think in words, you know, we think in like a flash of an image and like a sensation. It's all very, you know, little particles of an experience that we're experiencing um, when we fantasize. So it might be like they were just like really tuning into a particular sound that somebody might be making or we are tuning into like the veins on someone's arm or you know like there's something about it that really stands out to us so you want to really be descriptive about those pieces and you write it out in vivid detail so in, instead of just editorializing it kind of summarize it really quickly you really just want to go for the juicy stuff that you're seeing and then you go back and you underline every word that is a significant word you know so if it's like cock you would underline it or you know I don't know like whatever it Forums, is like fantasy. you were saying yeah yeah, yeah, like something that's like, you know, or something that moves the plot along or something that's a descriptive word that really seems important, you underline it, and then you can have a friend do this with you or you can do it by yourself. You just go back and for every word that you underline, you just look at the word without reading the sentence. You just look at the underlined word and you freely associate in the moment with what it com what comes up for you. So like, let's say you underline the word cock and then you read it and you said, pow. Well, then you would write power over top of cock, and then you just keep doing that throughout the whole narrative. Um, and that way, you can go back and read it again, and the next time you read it, you read your substituted words, and you get, like, this counter-narrative, or it's like an alternative text, right, to what you fantasize about, and it's more in touch with the theme and less about the details. I the theme is what juice is. <laughs> I, I really like it because you, we've talked about it before, and um, I think you recommend a book, Awareness, or just being aware, and that seems to be such a 
a common thing and I always feel like in doing this show that so many of us are barely scratching the surface of our sexuality, particularly as gay men, because we didn't have a lot of examples. And so right. to do that, I love this. I'm going to do it this weekend because I think when you just write freely, so many of us for so long have these fantasies, but we have a question like, where did these even come from? And I bet we're going to find certain certain words that are going to make us think about where they originated from. I, I wonder in this time of, of so many of us are, you know, self-quarantining and all that, can some of this really pull up trigger points that could be emotionally, real emotion, emotional for us? Yeah, absolutely. You can say more like when you say like pulling up trigger points, you mean like things that someone might want support about or just something that you might want to look at? What well, I think I'm just wondering as you do this exercise and you're freely writing the fantasy and then you're putting the words that the actual association is is there a part of this could that could actually trigger some childhood traumas and 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 what precautions do you kind of recommend for people if they're doing this at home maybe by themselves um should they be kind of in a good space that kind of thing uh yeah i see what you're saying um yeah i mean totally if you feel like you're um do it when you're obviously you're in a good space and if you're feeling kind of down if you feel anxious maybe it wouldn't be a good time to do this also because if you're feeling anxious you're going to be less in touch with the depths of what's going on for you but if something does happen to come up for you that feels like you want some support around absolutely we take it to like a sex therapist or a mental health professional to, to talk about it more because I mean whatever we're doing in our sexuality it is touching the stuff that Formed us, you know. So, however, however you came into your current state as a gay man, or like you know, whatever it took to get you to this point in your life, is part of your erotic narrative. So sometimes it does bring up stuff with people that's a little challenging to look at. But I always tell people, you know, like even if it's hard to look at, it it in maybe it's still informing how you're making choices. So like we're still engaging with all those wounds and things that we carry with us. We may just not be aware of it, but we're engaging with it and how we make choices and how we, you know, go about our lives. So if you go into something that feels challenging, yeah, absolutely, I would encourage, and I actually recommend that everyone, uh, not even if you don't have challenges, I really benefit from sex therapy and from mental health work around sexuality just because of everything that we've been through. I think the whole community has a kind of collective trauma anyway. So, yeah. It's a really good time to practice this. Um, I'm going to put the video that you posted on YouTube on tagspodcast.com because you explained it a little. You explained it really well, and I think it's such a great exercise, particularly in this time or any time really. Um, I did want to uh, ask you real quick. Uh, you're married to Sam, who I met Sam before, and, and you just got married, correct? Well, we're actually we're engaged. We oh, engaged. Sorry. Yeah, so we, yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah, we actually call each other husband now. Like me, I love, I love it. So yeah. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I noticed on your email blast that you put out is Sam. Does Sam have a project or a podcast called um, "How Asking Us How Are You Really Doing"? Did you want to? Yeah, he did. Um, tell us yeah. really quickly about that. Yeah, so he wanted to start this podcast. He's a Hakami Method practitioner, which is a somatic, um, like mind body based psychotherapy modality, and. In it, it asks people to be in touch with what's going on inside their body and like having these conversations. It's a therapeutic modality. So he started this podcast having conversations with people about what they're going through, and it's called "How Are You Doing Really?" Um, and he just he holds space for people to talk about what's really going on for them and what wants to come up in this conversation. So he directs the conversation a little bit, and he lets people just kind of share what they been going through and it's a really beautiful thing. I love it. I love it. I'm going to tune in because I think our governor here in New York is asking that same question because so many of us say, how you doing? Like just a throwaway and that question, how are you really doing? Like particularly now. Right. 
um, is really checking with people and that's what we really need. Uh, Finn Dearheart, I want to thank you so much. How can people, uh, I have it listed right there, people can follow you on Instagram at Finn Dearheart. Um, any other ways during the summer or that you want people to check in with you or if they want to take some Yeah, dude. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, I would just say go to my website. It's on my website. It, uh, I put everything, my blogs, my events, so everything goes through there. So sign up on my newsletter. Right when you land on the landing page, you can sign up. And it's findyourheart.com. It's D-E-R-H-A-R-T.com. I love it. I love it. Um, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Finn. And I can't wait till we can see each other in person and connect again. Dude. Me too. I love you, and I really appreciate this conversation and putting this out there for guys and all the everything you're up to. You're just like constantly putting out stuff for people and like allowing different perspectives to be heard. And I think that's so cool, and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Finn. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, brother. Bye. All right. Bye. Awesome, Cody. My Cody Maurice, my co-host. Um, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? It's good to hear your voice. It's good really good. Actually, I see you on the... Exactly. What happened? What are you saying? I'm, I'm yeah. just putting your your tag up there um, so people can see who I'm talking to, my co-host Cody. Mm -hmm. um, so we talk every week, we catch up, and, yeah. um, you know, I have to ask you, it might sound redundant to you, but we get a lot of new people calling in or, or checking in on the show. And you were seeing somebody prior to the pandemic, and I, we always like to mm -hmm. check in to see how you're doing because it's like our we're nosy bitches over here. <laughs> um, it's, how's it going currently with him? It's going okay. It's, we're, I mean, like we're in the last few months, like of pen of a quarantine. So I feel I feel like if we don't stick it out to the end of quarantine, then like. What was the what was all this for? What was all this energy that I put into this relationship for? So, and uh, I just really kind of want to see where we are after the the quarantine and like take it from there. So, um, we're still talking. We have a video date on Saturday. Um, I'll let you know how it goes next week. <laughs> it's interesting though. This yeah, because as we just start to see these incremental. Uh, movements of parts of the country opening up and New York is yeah. is part of that conversation uh, yeah I would imagine that you're probably wondering like you you've managed to keep in contact through this whole quarantine and damn it like <laughs> we better like at least be getting together after this I mean otherwise yeah. like we're in we're near the end now. Like, what, we need to do something. Yeah. We need to at least be together. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, good. I mean, I like that. That's a, um, you know, real. I want to get into a couple of hot topics, and but one of the ones we've talked both this week. I had a doctor, a psychiatrist, on the show talking about our mental yep. health, and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that both of you and I have shared how it can be ebbs and flows during this self-quarantine. And... 100%. Yeah, I'm just curious to know how you're doing lately uh, with everything, you know. My last guest um, just said his husband has a whole thing like, how are you really doing kind of thing that we don't <laughs> always ask of our friends and our loved ones. Yeah. And that's something that we need to ask people. Like, even your the people that on the outside they look like they're really strong like you never know what they're actually feeling on the on the inside so it's always good to check on, on, the, on your loved ones and the people that you care for um as for me personally um i just been keeping in contact with my friends and family you know confiding in them and making sure that they're okay as well and and just making sure that connection is there and, and, and holding close to the connections that are dear to me. So that's, that's the way I've been getting through. That sounds exactly what I've been doing and exactly one yeah. of the things that uh, Dr. Yarbrough said is, you know, and be aware of your own behaviors. So if you notice mm -hmm. maybe 
you know, whatever it could be, or having a little bit more wine, or it could be anything, you're getting off of a certain yeah. plan, but he, you know, you're not talking to or checking in with your crew, those are the things that can kind of keep you um, in line, and so I think, yeah, that's all we can do, right? And exercise, and keep that mind going, and, and you, we're all going to make it, we're all in this together. And I'm kind of excited that I have the same opinion as a doctor. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> that made me feel really good. So absolutely. <laughs> well, one of the things that I, a juicy thing that I wanted to get into it with you is uh, early on in Sex with Stevie, this live podcast, I had a guest on the show, DJ Dan DeLeon, who has a current yeah. web series called The Circuit. You can watch it on YouTube. It's called The Circuit, and it's about the gay. Uh, club scene, the glaze, gay, obviously, circuit scene. You and I, um, I've known Dan for a long time, and he's one of the producers on this web series, and uh, it's actually really good. We both liked it. Well, cut, yeah. cut to a recent phenomenon that so many of us know about. There was, uh, they, they were calling it Roni and the Rave, where a bunch of gays here in New York City got together and had sort of like a a circuit party at someone's apartment with DJs and there was a couple people including one or two of the characters that are in this circuit web series they were yeah. at this and they were posting on their their social media hey at like freely flaunting that they were at this all night circuit party thing well I know I sent you the link. I'm not sure if you had a chance to see it, but the current episode of The Circuit, which I'm going to put in tagspodcast.com tomorrow, or you could just go to The Circuit uh -huh. on YouTube, deals with this, and the actual producer of it um, confronts them. And Did you have a chance to watch it, Cody? I did watch it. And I'm so... It makes me so... It, it really... Um, uh, I'm sorry. It really like shows a lot of responsibility that they're addressing this. Um, so I'm really happy that they actually took the time to address this situation. It shows so much responsibility on the production side. So I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's and, juicy, and right? I, it, I told you it was going to be. This was going to be a dramatic series. I was you like, were I, so right <laughs> on. <laughs> I nailed it. I called it. I should, you know what? I'm playing the numbers tomorrow. I'm, I'm winning the lottery. <laughs> you are so right on it. Um, yeah, we won't give away too much of it, but one of the things I will say in that, you know, when people make mistakes and people do things, the I think there, there needs to be consequences for people's actions. Yeah. I don't think we need to crucify people, particularly when people want to do better. And, they're, and in this situation, we'll let people watch the whole episode, but they are confronted with their actions and, and openly talk about it. And I don't think it's, you know, one of the things like in a lot of situations that we're seeing currently play out currently is people like to crucify and then things like death threats and all that kind of thing come about and it's to me it's so unconstructive that any point mm -hmm. that you're trying to make or you know school if you need to school them is missed and goes out the window goes yeah. out the window i agree with you yeah I thought, um yeah go ahead the death threats are way too far. I get the I uh, I get the anger and um, the animosity that people have towards this type of behavior that these people exhibited. But you, I personally, it makes me just as bad as them if I wish death on people like that. That's just way too far. It makes me worse than them actually. So two wrongs don't make it right. That's what I always learned as a kid. Exactly, and these guys really. I'm, I, Kudos to the circuit, and I'm just blanking on the the producer's name right now. But um, I will put it on tagspodcast.com. You can look for the circuit. It's the current episode called Roni and the Rave, and I think yeah. it was very creative and in the moment and true reality TV in our community. That I mean, I don't know what else you'd want in a show. 
I'm I'm ready for it. I mean, like it just touched on so many things that are so current right now. So yes. I'm here for it. I and I knew that. Uh, I'm just glad they addressed it. Um, before we get into tomorrow's finale of Drag Race, which I gotta get your, I know, and I know you're a huge yeah. super fan. Um, there's a movie that debuts tomorrow that uh, with Tracy Ella Ross called High Note. Are you aware of the film? What? High Note. It was a film. Have you? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. This I is all new this. information to me. I hope I'm saying this right. Vivian Mead, if you're watching, please correct me on. Let me just look it up real quick, people, because I... Um, high note, high note. The... Okay, excuse me. I got it. The High Note. It was going to be a film that was going to come out in the theaters uh, with... Uh, um, like I said, uh, Tracy Ellis Ross and Dakota Johnson and Ice Cube. And it's about the character of Tracy Ellis. She's a, um, a pop star, a, a soul pop star, and which I love because, you know, her mom, Diana Ross. And she's, yeah. it addresses ageism in the music industry. And she wants to like produce a new um, album, but her team and everybody's like, I think they probably want her to not like do something a little bit more safe and it looks like it it's spectacular and anybody that loves like diva and all that good stuff uh it was going to be in the theaters and it's debuting tomorrow so i thought we could all do a watch party and watch this thing oh i'm so excited how did i not hear about I, this before? i'm a little bit some of the points that you gained in all the other areas i <laughs> You're even and out here, I've just got to say. But I am slipping. I can't believe it. The, the High Note with Tracy Ellis Ross uh, comes out tomorrow. And we'll talk offline and maybe we can all... Clutch. I think it's probably okay, going to... Like good. Apple TV or you can rent it or, or something like that. Um, I'm really cool. excited about that. It, um, okay, we'll, let's get into another thing that's happening tomorrow. It's the final finale of... Uh, RuPaul's Drag Race and it's going to be a different year, correct? Because in previous years it would have been a live broadcast and we, you people would have been able to go it would have probably been in LA and it would have been about performances what's your insight on what we can expect tomorrow on the finale? Um, I'm still hoping that they, they let Jackie Cox and Heidi and Closet like battle it out for the final spot in the top oh. four. But explain that real quick for people that don't watch. So, real quick, there was another contestant that uh, Sh uh, Sherry Pie that made her way into the final four, but was eliminated because of she was catfish catfishing. In reality, again, our world is really crazy, and she's been disqualified. Yeah. So, there's really currently three contestants running for uh, the, to be the next drag superstar and I love your idea though yeah so I, I still think they're going to do like a look for your life format so them having that one as a preliminary for the final four would be just that would make my, my whole season 12 corona life right there <laughs> <laughs> I love it I love it <laughs> Do you have so, a uh, RuPaul, call me. I got some ideas about production. I know you probably already filmed it, but oh well. <laughs> okay, and um, I have my favorite, I think I said it last week, Jada Essence Hall is my pick she's, to win. You have a favorite to win? She's my favorite. Okay, Jada Essence Jada. Hall. Jada, Team Jada all the way. Okay, yeah. all right. Awesome. Followed follow closely by Gigi Good. Oh, yes. You know what? All of them I like. I like them all a lot. So. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, I hear you. Um, Cody, thank you so much, as always. Um, I'm going to call you this weekend to um, talk about this, the high note and all this other good stuff. Um, but thank you, you as always, and I'm glad you're doing really well. Thank you, love. It's so nice to talk to you. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye.
Um, I want to thank I want to thank you all for joining me today for Sex with Stevie, the live podcast. This show gets repackaged, and you can find it and the Talk About Gay Sex podcast anywhere you get your podcast. It comes in on Friday. Show notes for everything that we've been talking about and links are at tagspodcast.com, T-A-G-S podcast. Thank you so much. Keep being safe and healthy and keep being sexy. I will talk to you soon.